down to Hilo now. So is there Alicia Malu Afiti, Malu Afiti, and Kenneth Kamak Ka Kamaia? Okay, would you please both come forward? And after them, I want to uh, like to have uh, Herbert Richards and Christopher English. As soon as these two vacate, you please come forward to the table. Um, uh, Malua Fiti, Ms. M um, Malua Fiti, please go ahead. You've got three minutes. Aloha, my name is Alicia Malua Fiti. I'm the executive director of the Hawaii Crop Improvement Association. We are seeing uh, incredible developments in crop research uh, that's really transforming farmers' lives. Uh, these technologies allow farmers to adapt and survive environmental challenges and innovations that mean farmers can be more productive. While critical dialogue is absolutely absolutely important. The debate is only constructive when it's based on scientific evidence. In January, an outspoken anti-GMO activist, Mark Linus, apologized for the myths that he had helped create about biotechnology. He apologized for the scare tactics and his peers, he and his peers used to fill tabloid headlines and for leading efforts to destroy crop research. He admitted that his previous views were anti-science, but once he devoured the peer-reviewed articles and scientific scientific data, he acknowledged that the inconsistency between his position on climate change and his rhetoric on GMOs. Because I have here 600 independent peer-reviewed studies for every single statement about biotechnology made here today. It is addressed in here. Um, and these are journals such as the Journal of Animal Science, Nutrition and Physiology, Toxicology, Veterinary Science, Food Science, that I can make this available to you. There, there is overwhelming scientific evidence. Most importantly of all, Linus apologized for contributing to the depriving of poor farmers of the valuable, potentially life-saving technology used successfully by most of us in the rich world. What is so often missed in this debate about GMOs is choice. The choice of farmers to consider planting a crop which could cope with droughts that are becoming more frequent. The choice to grow rice that provides nutrition to children to prevent blindness. And put simply, it's really about a choice that we in the United States and we in here in Hawaii are taking for granted. Today, there are over 17 million farmers growing genetically engineered crops. More than half of these crops are being grown in the developing world. We expect there to be another 6 million farmers in the next 20 years to be using this technology. These voices, however, are rarely heard. I don't expect us on a big island to even understand the challenges that they are facing. Clearly, we don't. But with respect to this technology, the rainbow papaya is one of our most fantastic and incredible scientific innovations in the world. Your rainbow papaya is held above all other technology and enhancements. And the folks who are not here today are the 150 papaya farmers who could not be here to testify who are out on their farms. And we're so lucky to have someone like King Kamiya from the Papaya Industry Association to really get you to understand how important papaya is, not just to the state, but to the world. Thank you. Sir, please go ahead. Madam Chair, Board, 